Hey everyone, welcome to the Wednesday One Thing. Uh, this is your host Hamza, and I'm joined here by Mori. How's it going, Mori? I'm doing great, Hamza. And before we jump into today's topic, I just want to acknowledge that it's Remembrance Day here in Canada, November 11th. So uh, we just really appreciate everyone who served in the military in Canada and the U.S. Absolutely. This week in uh, the Wednesday One Thing, we'll be diving into Retail Dives report called that uh, titled Holiday Shipping Headaches Have Just Begun. And essentially what they've uh, narrowed this down to is the pandemic rattled most aspects of the industry, uh, consumer demand surges, supply strains, widespread store closures, but it also accelerated some trends that were already projecting, um, notably the increased adoption of e-commerce. Salesforce Retail and Goods Practice has noted that even as stores began opening in Q2 and Q3 of this year, e-commerce sales have still risen year over year in comparison with 2019. But while the influx in digital orders helped offset store declines, it introduced other problems, particularly around shipping delays. Even Amazon experienced disruptions that caused it to walk back its uh, one-day delivery promise uh, to limit its assortment and postpone its annual Prime Day event. The uh, VP of Strategy at Salesforce Retail and Goods even went on to say that shipping can define the winners and losers of this holiday season, as the famous The Grinch You Stole Christmas um, analogy goes. Maury, wanted to open it up to you and uh, just ask what you think might be some of the biggest learnings of the unique situations we find ourselves in um, and just the size, the sheer length of the holiday season uh, with it having begun in, um, in October, really. Yeah, I think we've come on this show before and we've said the highest ROI activity you can do perhaps is getting uh, getting customers through the door and making a seamless checkout or perhaps the usability of your site is the most important. But what I think is like even more crucial above all else, and this is above having a great brand, above having a great usability site, above having a great product, is can you get your product to your customer? Like I think last year was there was this uh, article about the the collapse of a way and they were going through this uh, this holiday problem where their customer service team was overwhelmed because they had this amazing product that everyone wanted, but there were so much back orders and back delays on this product that their customer service team was being overwhelmed with negative responses, asking where the products were. And I think that really just illustrates like a way this amazing brand also couldn't get their product out and the scathing reports they were getting just overwhelmed their team. And so right now, again, we keep harping on this, that it's the biggest time for e-commerce ever, there, there are inevitably going to be shipping delays and problems with uh, distribution. And so going into the holidays, I think Black Friday is almost a foregone conclusion now, but going into December or Christmas, like this is prime time to make sure that you're ready and equipped to get your product out to your, to your customers. That's really, that's really the, the gist of this. That's what I take from it. Yeah, we should also take a moment to uh, uh, express our deepest sympathies for customer service teams up and down the country, uh, up and down the continent, and uh, some of the things that they might be hearing over the phone or over email in uh, in the coming months. I think some of the biggest uh, learnings that we can take from the actions that the major retailers like Amazon and Target have already done is that they're also expecting shipping delays, uh, and that they've actually spread out their holiday season to spread out the demand, right? And something that they've done is focus on fulfillment. We talked about how Amazon had already been taken aback by uh, the increased uh, orders and, and, and the pressures that put on its fulfillment centers. But I think a lesson that uh, DDC brands and, and founders can take away as well is really just focus on fulfillment. Uh, think about outsourcing, you know, to get creative with uh, how you're getting the products into the hands of consumers. Um, when I was reading the uh, retail dive piece, Maury, uh, the VP at, uh, at at Salesforce, who I quoted earlier, uh, also said that the challenge is that with the surcharges that are taking place, retailers will also likely have to eat those costs, and that will ultimately hit their bottom lines and, and their margins. Uh, because something you also pointed out was uh, loyalty has shifted from the brand experience to the fulfillment experience, and uh, customers uh, are prioritizing the ability to get the product when the retailer or brand promised it. How important is fulfillment experience going to be over the next, um, let's say, 45 days? 
I mean, you actually bring up a really good point about that brand experience. And like, as you think about e-commerce, again, you have to think about it more than just a, I'm buying a good. Like when I buy from a brand, you're buying the entire experience. So you're buying the brand, you're buying the product, you're buying the delivery time. And actually in most cases, you're also buying the return process. And that's something I think people might overlook as well, which is if I don't like something, I want to return it. This is a problem that Rent the Runway had a long time ago, which is um, returns being overwhelmed. So again, all of these shipping costs are going to add up. I, I'm predicting, this is a hot take, there are going to be lots of customer service problems across the board, whether that's from um, delivery and returns. And the people who nail shipping this holiday season are going to be huge winners. And uh, one thing I was just thinking about, and this is where I think it's really an interesting space to be in with e-commerce, is that, um, you know, we always expect shipping delays, like we know things aren't gonna arrive on time, but like what happens to the brands who are saying like, trying to trying to front load their sales right now, saying like, get in now, make sure to buy this now so we can ensure that your, your shipment gets there on time and making that like the core thing. Like we wanna make sure your holiday experience is great. So you should buy now and ensure that your, your packages are gonna arrive on time. Yeah, great points, Bori. Uh, to touch on one of the things you mentioned on, on the returns that are expected, um, guess what Salesforce estimated would be the worth of returns this holiday season? Uh, you know, I love a good numbers round. Uh, so the, the, the worth, the number of, sorry, the dollar figure for the returns. Yeah. Ah, uh, God, so bad at numbers. Let's, let's go with uh, north, north of $2 billion. $2 billion. Cool. The answer is that the estimate, according to Salesforce and their projections, is $280 billion worth of returns this holiday season. Oh, so uh, I wasn't wrong. I said north of $2 billion. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. That's, uh, you know, uh, Julius Caesar has been dead for more than 70 years now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and, and, and really that, uh, that ties into how Consumers don't have the luxury of going into physical stores to browse, um, to test out products and uh, ask associates for help. It, uh, double stacking, double buying of, of products and just getting them shipped before you choose which one to return has actually been a recurring theme through most of the, uh, most of the uh, pandemic economy and most of the e-commerce uh, boom through the pandemic economy. And certainly something we'll see a repeat of uh, over the coming weeks. So returns are going to be high. Fulfillment pressures are going to be deep. Um, would you say it's, uh, it's the chance for some brands to shine over others or can all brands control the controllables and focus on just getting the products out to the consumers? Yeah, I mean, I, I literally just touched on this, which is saying that shipping is part of your brand experience. People don't just buy the product. People aren't just buying the brand. They're buying the entire thing. And that just shows with uh, the story last year with Away, and it's certainly going to come up this year, which is, you're right, people can't go into stores to try things on. So people are going to over overbuy and then over return. And like, it's so inevitable that we're heading towards this perfect storm of customer service being overwhelmed, shipping costs going up. So what I would say to e-commerce founders is again, drive some urgency now to secure the purchase. I don't even, I think also maybe trying to bake in that goodwill to your customers saying, expect shipping delays, like be nice this holiday season. We're working as hard as possible uh, really to, to own that entire brand experience and even own those mistakes as they come up. Yep, absolutely agree. I think uh, some consumers are still going to be those who are going to buy in December, but yeah, spreading out that holiday season certainly will help. Well, that's, uh, that's it for uh, this week's Wednesday. One thing, Maury, thanks as ever for your time and uh, uh, looking forward to reconnecting next week with you and uh, all the listeners.